terms. How do you reconcile some of your differing views theologically uh, regarding issues like baptism or eschatology? Um, since you were teaching at the same conferences and, and published by the same publishers, so how would you explain to uh, a layperson who is uh, on the fence and confused about whether these are issues that we need to be standing firm for? Well, in one sense, we don't need to be involved with reconciliation because the one necessary prerequisite for uh, reconciliation is estrangement. And we don't have any of that. Now, how do we reconcile the different views that we have, like on baptism? Well, so far we haven't been able to do that. <laughs> the only way that can happen is if one or all of us change our position on the thing. And so I'm willing to wait. Uh, and so, so are my brothers over here. but. Uh, you know, the, the, issue, the issues that are before the church in the 21st century touch the very heart of the gospel and the very essence of the Christian faith. And uh, for me to be able to find men who are as valiant and as clear and articulate and, and brave as these guys are on the core issues of, of the Reformed faith, uh, the, the areas where we disagree, though all disagreements are significant and are important. But the other matters so far outweigh these, in my opinion, that uh, w I certainly don't have any problem standing side by side. I, these are the guys I want in my foxhole when the shooting starts. Uh, Some of them may be a little more wet than I am, but we'll… <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think we both dried out after that experience. Uh, I think it's, um, it's very important to say that as a pastor for all these years at Grace Community Church, um, we have had a, a basic principle um, of membership in our church, and it's this. If the Lord will allow you into His kingdom, you can be in our church. That is the only requirement that we would have. We don't set any requirement beyond conversion. If, if, if the Lord accepts you, Believe me, we accept you. We have a doctrinal statement, but it's titled, What We Teach. It isn't titled, What We Believe, because we don't all believe it. There are people in our church who don't believe like I believe about everything. Uh, there are people in, in our church who uh, believe in infant baptism, who are every possible Every possible uh, angle on uh, eschatology uh, uh, would be represented in our church. But we teach uh, what we have always taught and what is defined in our doctrinal statement with no illusions that everybody necessarily believes it. That doesn't change my responsibility for them, my love for them. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't alter my, my uh, duty and joy to shepherd them, to care for them, to nurture them, to work to sanctify them. Uh, as a pastor, and, and so uh, I have no different relationship with other men outside the congregation of our church than I have with the people that are in the church. Wherever they are in their spiritual development and growth and understanding of the Word of God, um, they're one with me in Christ, and, and I celebrate that. It comes down to what I call the drivetrain of, of theology, the absolutely non-negotiable necessities at the core of our faith on which we all stand.